Hi everyone, Teddy here. And I'm Courtney, and today we're gonna to be doing seven no-brainer date night fragrances for winter time. So how this is going to work, and just to kind of set the stage here, these are just going to be designer fragrances. We're only going to do seven. I know there's plenty more that you could include here, but we just wanted to kind of make the cutoff somewhere. So don't get mad at us if we don't include one of your favorites. Just, just Let us know down below if we miss one. That's of course true. Also, this is mostly around winter and cold weather. So these are really geared around that. And just something that I would say, no matter who you are, what circumstance, where you're at in the world, that these would just probably be good fits for you and they're just safe, mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing when you're talking about getting that nice date night fragrance. No, for a day, date night, right? you want something that's really easy to love. Yes. It's mass appealing. Because you're wearing that fragrance for the other person you're going to see. Yep. So that's kind of the intention behind this video. So we can go back and forth. We both have our own picks. I think we picked out seven. Mm -hmm. I think I have four, you have three. So yep. we'll just go back and forth. Because I have four, I will start. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Sorry, we're not doing ladies first, but I'm uh, fine. <laughs> we can start with one of my personal favorites, and that is Jazz Club by Mason Margiela. Incredible choice. So what I really like about this fragrance, and I've recognized with myself that there are certain accords and just notes that I gravitate towards, mm -hmm. and this is one that has many of the things that I like. Uh, you're getting a nice tobacco note, uh, getting a mix with rum, so it's a boozy kind of tobacco with some vanilla backbone. It's not so sweet but you do get some nice sweetness that will kind of bring it all together so you're not getting that kind of nauseating effect that can sometimes come with the pairing of tobacco and alcohol. Yeah. So I think it comes together really well. Also pink pepper, which personally for me, like looking at a lot of the fragrances I like, that's something that's also a common occurrence. And I think it has a little bit of a creamy, spicy, kind of vivid, and just kind of reminds me of a date night. It's like a sophisticated date night to yeah. me. It's, it's, I would say this is a higher designer. This has some, niche components to the overall just blend of all the notes. It just feels a little bit more premium than some, maybe some of the other offerings here, but still, I, I just love this fragrance. I know you do too. I adore that fragrance, and it really does smell like the name of the fragrance. Like, it smells like an attractive guy, an attractive girl sitting in a jazz club, sipping on a drink, um, just having a really nice date night. So it smells just like that. The entire replica line, they do such a nice job. Like all of these fragrances. I mean, I think this might be my favorite. A lot of people like By the Fireplace. That one's a little too smoky for me. I agree. I, I prefer this one. This is, I think, more of a mass appealing type of fragrance. And I think that women especially like this type of fragrance yes, too. Yes, yes, I love that one. It's a great choice. I'm sure any girl would like it too. Jazz Club, Mesa Margiela. All right, my first pick here is Versace Eros. This one is a kind of youthful clubbing type of scent. So if you're a guy that likes to go out, maybe you're trying to meet some ladies at a club or a bar or something like that, I think that this would be a really solid option. Um, there's that vanilla in it that adds that little creamy sweetness to it, but then it also kind of balances out nice with the mint, the apple, um, some lemon and cedar as well. So yeah, it's, it's, I mean that, this is where I think when you talk about this date night idea, and some of these are obvious choices, but I think that's good. And you also have to think about what are the different types of environments that somebody would be wearing one of these fragrances? Yes, in? and like, this this is your club scent. Yeah, I mean that that needs to be a little more loud. Maybe you're in a more of a public setting that's uh, it's not as close quarters, and maybe you just are kind of walking by somebody you want to try to set a tone that way. Yep. You have to kind of think of the circumstance. Like jazz club feels a little bit more cozy. As it's well a little bit more fragrance. intimate. This one is not yes. as intimate. I would say it's more of like you're right, the youthful clubby, loud kind of thing. And I don't like to stereotype completely, but yeah, this is definitely somebody in their 20s or younger. Yes. Jazz club, I would say, is now like older, upper 20s. Upper 20s, like 30s. Early 40s. I think it's a little more universal as you go up. Mm -hmm. I, I can't really see a 50-year-old guy wearing that on their date. I would say the performance on this one is really good too, which is something you'll want to keep in mind if you're in, you know, kind of an environment like that. You want something with good performance that people are going to notice. So, mm -hmm. really great one for that. Next pick. So the first two picks that I have here are probably two of my favorite designer fragrances. Wow. I, I mean, honestly, out there that I that I at least wear quite a bit in this type of, of like winter environment. Like mm -hmm. they're really good cold weather scents. Yeah. This is Terry Mugler Pure Malt. This is a fragrance that it has two different types of experiences. On the opening, you get a very fruity fragrance, like off the top. It's I almost like the opening more than the dry down, but the dry down is still good. Yeah. Uh, you're just getting a blast of just this fruity notes, uh, malt, whiskey, so it's kind of a bit boozy right off the top, which I think that's a nice pairing. I think it works well. Mm -hmm. But as it dries down, you start to get some hints of vanilla, you get some milky richness in that dry down. And I also noticed, and I was looking into this, I, I think you said one time that this thing smells like Play-Doh in the dry down. Yes. And I was looking at 
kind of why that is the case. Okay. A lot of the same types of like notes in Play-Doh, what they, they describe it as is like this salty wheat. Yeah. And that's kind of what you're getting here. Okay, so it makes sense, sense why that would be the case. Now, yeah. not to scare people. It's, I don't think it smells like that in the beginning. It's more of on the dry down. Like I'll notice at the end of a day, like we're laying down, I'm like, you smell like Play-Doh today. This is, well, and <laughs> we're probably not maybe defending this fragrance the right way, but that's like 12 hours in too. Like, yeah. so performance yeah. is quite good on my skin. I can't mm -hmm. speak for everybody, but I say this is definitely an excellent performer yeah. for me. Uh, I have a lot of luck with this. I think it's a good time around the holidays to wear this. Mm -hmm. See this being a great also date night fragrance. It does smell really nice. I agree. Yeah, and I, whenever you spray that, I can smell it from across the apartment. I'm like, oh, he's wearing pure malt today. But it's not overwhelming though either, no. you know? It's, I think it's a subdued It just enough. performs really well. Mm hmm I agree. So, Pure Malt, one of my personal favorite designer fragrances. All right, for my next pick here, I have CH Privé. And if you've never smelled this one, you need to get your hands on it because it is a perfect date night fragrance. It has that leather, whiskey, tonka, lavender. So it kind of reminds me of a guy in a leather jacket with a Jack Daniels. Um, kind of stereotypical there, but it's it's what I get from it. So for the performance for this one, I would say it's probably average, uh, maybe five to six hours. It has a really strong projection off the top, maybe the first two hours or so. Um, but once that leather note kind of dies down, I would say the fragrance as a whole kind of dies down with it. So. Yeah, I mean, I like the packaging though too. It's a, maybe a little tacky, but it kind of has like that flask. Yeah, yeah, it's like a flask. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, kind of a no-brainer. Kind of more youthful as well, kind of same with Eros. But I think it's a, for the certain type of individual, you have the look. When you smell this, I think you'll know if this is for you or if it's not for you. And yeah. based on those descriptions, I think you get an idea. It's pretty sweet too, I would say. It does have some sweet uh, sweetness off the top, so uh, certainly can get that. But it does have like, kind of enough of its own kind of backbone with like the leather and the whiskey that I don't think it comes off too strong in that area. No, it's a good choice, safe option. All right, so for our next pick here, this one is just to appease many people, as I know this is a absolute, just hype fragrance beyond belief. YSL's Lanoui de Lome. Now this is the original version. Now there are many flankers. Actually the first one that I owned of all the Lanoui de Lomes was the Le Parfum. I was gonna say, don't you have another one? like? I do, and I like that one because it has the pink pepper on it. This one is the original uh, just formulation of this uh, family. A lot of flankers uh, came afterwards, but this is known for cardamom off the top. You're getting some great lavender, cedar, vetiver. It's just that spicy, sweet, aromatic fragrance that I think is mass appealing mm -hmm. uh, and just has that woody backbone. So it does have some, I would say average, maybe slightly above average longevity. Some people say that there's been some reformulations with this one and that is causing some of the performance to go down. But I think it's appealing enough, but it has some sophistication to it. It's a designer fragrance. This is a mass appealing fragrance, but uh, it also feels like it's better suited for like a night. Like it just, all of these YSL, Lanoine de Lome line, they just feel like kind of nighttime fragrances. They have like this mysteriousness about them right. and like the spiciness behind them. So they're, they're solid. They're just no brainers. And I think that's really what we're going for here. This is also, I would say a little bit more mature compared to maybe something like- um, Like Eros. Yeah, like Eros. It's a nice step up from something like that. Not as loud either. I think it's a little bit, takes a bit more of a backseat, but still would not be out of, uh, its environment or maybe its sweet spot if you're in like even a clubbing setting, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I picture it also for like um, like a dinner date. Sure, absolutely. Maybe so. drinks on a patio, something like that. I can see that too. <laughs> but yeah, no brainer, line and weed alone. Okay, my next one is one of my all time favorites and that is Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal. I adore this fragrance. This is one that has been around for quite some time. It was created in 1995 and kind of set the stage for the Versace Aero. So if you've ever smelled both of these, they are pretty similar. Um, so this one kind of helps lay the foundation for the Versace Aero. Style. Yeah, yeah, I would say so too. Just because like, you know, this was like the mass appealing, the, the mm -hmm. use of vanilla and mint. Yes. And I think Eros in a lot of ways is going to replicate that. Mm -hmm. Can't necessarily say, they're totally unique in totally their own different, ways. Totally different, But yeah. you can see, there's certainly at There's least some there. nod to what this fragrance was able to do yep. when it was unveiled in the 90s. No yep. question about it. Also created by Francis Kirkshawn, who is iconic. Or Love his work, it's incredible. Um, again, that vanilla, lavender, mint, a little bit of cinnamon, tonka bean in there, nice amber and sandalwood in the dry down. Uh, just really safe, great option. Yeah, it's a bit more powdery than some of the other choices. Uh, yeah. it, it does kind of have like this mistiness to it compared mm -hmm. to some like the peppery or spicy tones. It's not it as much that, it's fresh vanilla. Mm -hmm. That combination can 
it can gas some people out. Some people don't like that combination. I'm like with arrows, for example, not for me because of that. This is a little bit more subdued. And also some people will say, no way that this is anywhere close to the original Lamal. And there are many flankers out there now. Has it been reformulated sometimes? Reformulated, I mean, that's just going to happen. But also just the flankers now available, like a lot of people like Ultra Mall. I like this more. I don't know what you think about the bottle. It's a little... As a guy? Maybe not. <laughs> slightly questionable, but you know what? It smells good, so who cares? Yep, exactly. Last one. And mass appealing. People talk about it all the time. People rave about that one. Yes, Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb Extreme. This is a, the bottle's kind of cool. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, a little, it's like a grenade. It's a little tacky, you gotta pull the tab, I think that's kind of fun. That's, <laughs> that's good fun. It has character. It does have that. character, but this is, I think, a great example of a mass appealing designer winter fragrance. Also could be utilized for date night. Mm -hmm. You have vanilla, tobacco, pepper, so nice combination of things that I like, like I mentioned. You can see why, you know, I think this is good. Yeah. No, do not like this as much as Jazz Club, nowhere close. This is not a fragrance for me. It just kind of has more of that designer smell to it, which I think is good for most people. And I think that's, if you're trying to go for something that's gonna be appealing in a date environment, I think this makes a lot of sense. Also, when talking about performance, it's solid, no question about it. Off the top, I'm not as much of a fan, but as that vanilla starts to fade, it gets, the dry down on this, I think, is very good. It's phenomenal, yeah. I, I, I do like the dry down a lot more, so. I think it's a safe option. I think a lot of women like this scent. It's very yes. cozy, uh, sexy, and the dry down, like Teddy said, is even better than, you know, first up, first out of the bottle. And it, it does have good performance, but mm -hmm. it's not as, like, overwhelming as, like, an Eros. Like, I don't get... It's not as punchy. No. Yeah, and vanilla sometimes, when it's too sweet, when the note of vanilla is too sweet, it can gas people out. It's, like and it can be nauseating as well, but I don't get that really with this one. No, I think this is a little mass appealing. It's a bit more modern compared to like a Lamal too, I think, mm -hmm. which is nice. So yeah. uh, if you like these tobacco fragrances, which I think are, you know, the tobacco vanilla combination, you see this a lot with these kind of wintertime fragrances. And for good reason, they just work. And I think this is a great example of exactly that. All right, guys, that is all we have for this video. These are our seven no-brainer date night fragrances. Let us know down in the comments below what your all-time favorite date night fragrance is. Oh, we missed them. I know we missed we them. People are going to just be going crazy. What about this? What about this? What about this? Yeah. I get it. Uh, if you guys have other ones, certainly recommend them down below, but we couldn't make this a you know hour plus long video. Yeah, we're gonna make a video today, not a movie, right? Exactly. So, so yeah. we gotta keep it open for the future as well. So uh, these are all ones that we you know personally have and you know mm -hmm. I, I've worn. So I definitely feel confident about that as well. So Courtney approved. That. Courtney approved for a nice date night. Everybody cares about that deeply. So that is very important. I'm glad we we're able to establish that. <laughs> but if you guys also like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, of course, because this is a newer channel. But really looking forward to what this channel has for us in the future. We both love fragrances. This is something we both share with each other. is uh, kind of a passion of ours. So uh, we're excited to see where this takes us. We have a lot of things planned. We'd love for you guys to join us on that. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you all next time.